Today I'm going to show you how to combine GitHub Copilot with Playwright MCP to generate tests with Java in IntelliJ. By the end of this video you will see how to use AI to drive the browser, explore your app like a user, and then generate clean Playwright tests. We'll do real-world scenarios with some complex steps and you'll see why Playwright MCP is definitely worth the hype. Let's dive in. First, I want to talk a bit about how Playwright MCP actually works and what benefits you can get from using it. This model context protocol, MCP, is what allows AI models to tap into Playwright's browser automation capabilities. In other words, AI assistants like Copilot will be able to drive the browser and call tools like navigate to URL, click elements, type text, and so on. Playwright MCP can also provide the agent a structured snapshot of the page's accessibility tree and visibility into network activity. We'll take a closer look at that later. Essentially, you can describe what you want to test in plain English, like find a product that is out of stock or check if the add to cart button is disabled or something like that. And the AI agent will explore the site like a user, then generate the code and even suggest any edge cases on top of your original test scenario. So it's way more powerful than just using the code gen for locators and basic scripts. I'll demonstrate it with some more complex test scenarios in a bit. I already have a Maven Java project with Playwright here. The MCP flow doesn't require special project layout, so you can use an existing project or start from scratch if you want. But I can quickly go over my fixtures class I have here and I have predefined some options, base URL over here. If you're interested in an end-to-end -end setup tutorial, there's a separate video on that on my channel. I have one example test here in the tests package that navigates to the practice software testing toolshop website. The, the URL is defined in the browser context configuration in the fixtures we saw earlier. It's basically a mock toolshop with real e-commerce elements like product listings, carts, and so on. All right, now we need to make sure IntelliJ is configured properly to be able to talk to the Playwright MCP server. First thing, make sure you have the GitHub Copilot plugin installed. You can open the settings, plugins, marketplace, and type Copilot and install it. You'll need a GitHub account with Copilot enabled. Next, you'll want Node.js on your machine, a version 18 or higher. We're not going to do anything fancy with Node. Playwright MCP just spins up a Node server behind the scenes. If you can run node-v to check your current version and update if needed and you're good now go to the settings tools mcp server and enable mcp server you don't have to do anything else here but there's a brave mode setting here i'm going to turn that on for this demo because i'm only touching a test website and i don't want to confirm every single command if you're pointing at anything sensitive, leave it off so you get a prompt before every tool call. Now let's point Copilot at the Playwright MCP server. So go to Tools again and click on GitHub Copilot, Model Context Protocol, and hit Configure. Here you will need to paste this JSON. This is what actually launches the Playwright MCP server via the npx command. When that's running, Copilot can discover all the Playwright tools like browser navigation, element inter interactions, uh, network inspection, all the good stuff. Next, you can click on the allowed model to pick whichever models you like. I like working with Claude 4.5, which is the latest as of right now. Now open Copilot chat and switch the dropdown from chat to agent and pick your model. Then click the little configure tools icon here and you should see the Playwright tool set listed there. If you want another confirmation, look at the GitHub Copilot MCP log panel on the left. It should say connection running and show something like oh, 20 plus tools discovered. Don't worry if your number is different than this uh, because it can change between versions. And that's it. We should be all set with the IDE setup. Before we start asking the agent to start writing tests, I like to give it a little standing guidance. Basically, a small prompt file at the root of the project so it behaves consistently. And uh, here's what I put in mind. I'm telling it to explore the website with the MCP tools first. 
And that means it'll actually open up the site, click around, look at the page, and then generate code. And uh, I'm also nudging it to put tests in a spot that makes sense for my Playwright project, so they show up where you'd expect them. All right, now we have the prompt in context as shown by the on toggle in the copilot. For the first test scenario, we have a very practical check. I'm going to ask the agent to find a product that's out of stock, click into it, and confirm the quantity increase and decrease buttons are disabled. And inside Copilot, with the agent selected, I'm pasting this text here. I'm asking it to generate the playwright test for the scenario, and I'm asking it to find a product listed as out of stock, click on the product to open it, assert that the increase and decrease quantity buttons are disabled, follow playwright best practices for locators, etc. I'll hit send. Okay, you'll see the agent is using the Playwright MCP tools here as browser navigate is being called first. And it opened up a separate browser. The output here shows what the agent is trying to do. And there you go, it found the out of stock item and clicked into it to follow through the next steps. Awesome. Now it should continue reviewing the project structure to follow any patterns and uh, fixture logic if needed. So we should have a new file created under the tests package as instructed. It's going to run the generated tests now and make sure all tests pass. After it's done, you should review the output to make sure all looks good and make some changes here and there if needed before you proceed to the next scenario. This is a good time to point out anything to the agent you want to follow in the next steps. That's really the flow. Describe what you want, let the agent explore with MCP, then get back with a runnable test. All right, what I wanna do here is ask the agent not to assume that the out of stock product will be the same product every time. So it needs to pick a different resilient locator for the product text out of stock. If we do that, the agent should keep that in mind in the next test scenarios. Now, let's see. Okay, now it's opening the website again to find a better locator. Okay, great. This time it's using data test equals out of stock attribute, which should work just fine. And now that it's verifying it works as expected, it has updated the relevant test method sections. Looks like it's using locator chaining, using an X path, but we don't really need this since it's already picking the first element that contains the out of stock attribute. So we can delete that to keep things simple. Okay, now let's run the test to make sure it passes. All right, great, the test passes and now we can move on to the next scenario. All right, now we can ask the agent to create a slightly more complex test. Uh, let me go back to the website. Okay, here we have several pages of products. We can go to the next page by simply clicking the next button. So let's ask the agent to keep checking all pages and print out the total number of out of stock products and their product names. Before we send that over, notice how when the page is loading, there's no loading or progress indicator. Ideally, the user would have a visual icon to represent that loading state. To avoid the agent spending time debugging why results didn't refresh after clicking next, I suggest you include a short tip so it uses network aware weights before inspecting the DOM. So I'm going to ask the agent to page through everything, collect all the out of stock product titles and print a summary. So I'll paste these test steps. Iterates pages by clicking the next button until it's disabled. On each page, collects products labeled out of stock and accumulates their titles. After visiting all pages, prints the total count and the product titles. Make sure to use something like wait for response 
to make sure the API response has completed and new products have loaded then continue so with this bullet point i'm suggesting not to immediately read the dom to avoid flakiness by waiting for the api response from the url that contains products so we'll also check out playwright mcp's ability to tap into network activity to verify the api calls being made in fact let me open the mcp tools list again to show you it's one of the tools okay it's called browser network requests let's send this over now it's going to navigate to the website again to click around to find new locators and complete the next steps. All right, it found the next button. Good, it's using get by role locator. So it also inspected the network activity for the wait logic with the tool call. Now it's making changes in the test file. Okay, so next it's going to run the test to make sure it works as expected. Looks like the pagination is working so far. Oh snap, it's not able to recognize the next button gets disabled after the last page. So it just hangs up there. But that's fine. When things like this happen, it should start debugging and change the logic again. There you go. Looks like it found the issue and working on the solution. I'll just accept these changes and see what we get. So it will rerun the test now. Let's see. Cool. Looks like it passes this time and the summary looks good too. So we can now review the scripts quickly. Again, it may not come up with the cleanest solution like we saw earlier. You may want to update some parts like, for example, I'd update this one here and I'd also swap this one. Roll button here looks good. Overall, it did a pretty good job. I hope this demo showed the value Playwright MCP offers. Let me know if you have any questions or what you'd like to see next. And please like and subscribe.